Hello YouTube, welcome to the next video on the Land Rover Discovery V8 engine rebuild. In this video I clean up and reassemble the timing cover, uh, which is some... Um, it does a lot of things as I'll explain. Uh, the pistons and conrods get a clean up ready for the new rings and the rocker shafts get uh, disassembled, cleaned and reassembled on new rocker shafts. The thing I chose was this, the front cover, so it's the um, it's the camshaft chain cover which goes behind here and uh, the crankshaft sprocket here. It's also the water pump uh, frame or housing if you like and uh, it's also the oil pump which is in here and the oil pressure regulator valves, there's one here and there's one here. One of them bypasses the flow to the radiator, the oil radiator, and one of them bypasses the flow from the pump, uh, which is actually a pressure relief valve, so that one dictates the pressure in, in the system. Uh, this is the oil filter takeoff, um, and then inside you can see uh, that's where the, the cam chain goes. And that's the oil pump itself. So I bought a new oil pump, despite the old one being okay, it wasn't broken, it was a little bit battered, uh, with lots of dents on it and so on. It was just in spec, actually, but this had an oil pump problem. It was a um, the pickup tube got full of silicon, that was the issue, and that failed the big ends. So the crank has been reground. So I've gone belt and braces and I've got a new pump, and it's a machined steel piece rather than a sintered. Uh, from Turner Engineering. So that's to go in there. So this is the first thing I've done. So I've got everything off, stripped it, cleaned it, cleaned it through. I've taken all the bits of plumbing out. I can take out these pressure relief valves. They're sat there, look. Uh, and I'm about to put them back together. So first things first, I'm going to put this new seal in the front of there. So that's the front crank seal. That is the next job. So that's in there. That's home. It's um, The tip of the seal is lower than the edge. And I managed to use the old one, just hammering away like that like that in these edges so that the um the edge of that is hammer the edge of that it's very easy to deform these seals so by you've got to keep the pressure on, on the very outer edge of it and then it's nice and strong but if you go hammering somewhere in the middle uh, you'll bend it immediately so i'm quite pleased with that it's in there nicely ready to go so i'll put the pressure relief valves back in there i was considering strengthening the pressure relief valve spring so putting a couple of washers under that spring so raising that pressure from 55 or whatever it is to 60. But I thought about it and um, I changed my mind in the end. 50 psi is absolutely ample, but of course you only get that when the oil pump is pumping thick enough oil. So as soon as the engine's warmed up uh, and the oil is thin, it leaks through the bearings uh, much more quickly and it might be 30 psi. Or basically anything below that maximum pressure is not dictated by the pressure relief valve. So I changed my mind, <laughs> I put all those washers away and um, and I just put it back together as it was. Yeah, so here we are, nearly finished, putting it all back together. Here's the old water, water. Here's the old oil pump. You can see a fairly decent amount of scoring on that surface as I reflect the light past it. Look, um, there's quite a bit on the inside of the lobes as well. It doesn't rotate too smoothly. Um, and as I said, I checked the spec from the manual. You stick a feeler gauge in the uh, in the gap. You can see through there with the, with the most closed up tooth. There you go, uh, and you measure that tolerance. And also, what was it? I think with it in there, you measure the yeah, you put a straight edge across the top, measure the tolerance there. And it was on the limit of spec for both of them. So really, there weren't much in it. But I know these are prone to fail. They're sintered, uh, so I've learned. And I've seen many photos of them snapping here, you know, from these edges where the, where the outer ring is quite thin. And they still kind of work, but uh, obviously they can't work as effectively. So I just went belt and braces and bought a new one. So there we go. So that's the old one. And here's the new one, which apparently is milled from solid steel. Uh, and it's from Turner Engineering. It looks very nice. Looks exactly the same. Here it is. It rotates nice and freely um, through its rotation. So obviously there's no wear on those lobes and on, on those um, contact points on the inside. It's made of solid steel, like I said. And uh, yeah, there we go. No, uh, no scoring on it. So obviously it'll be a fraction taller as well because of the wear. So you put the. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera there. Uh, it's very hard to tell, but this is quite a sharp edge on here, and this one has a, a chamfer on it. So you put the chamfer down. Right, so putting lots of oil in where the oil pump goes, and uh, putting the oil pump in, putting the cover on, lots of oil again, and putting the screws in and bolting, uh, tightening those down. They're machine screws. Get them nice and tight, and now I'm checking that the pump freely moves. I can rotate it. So now I'm taking the screws out, these machine screws go out one by one, and putting Loctite on them. And putting them back in and tighten them as much as I can with the screwdriver, which is 
probably more than the spec actually but there we go they've got a very short grip length these bolts so they need to be uh, locked tighted in and the manual suggests that as well so there we go all done that's that then quite involved really the timing cover clean up check and uh, reassemble with a new oil pump yeah check the o-rings i replaced a couple but the rest were looking good uh, new seal put some gear on there some sealer on there because i was leaking and a bit on there just to be careful and she is good to go, so that will go in the kitchen now where it's nice and clean and it will stay nice and clean until I get the engine back. Right guys, so I'm done with the front cover. I think I showed you that, yeah. I want to the rocker shaft. This is the right hand rocker shaft and the left hand one I've dismantled. I'm cleaning it in brake thinners with my little spray jobby. And I'm assembling it onto a new shaft. The shafts, you can see here, they are a little worn on the bottom side. They're actually pretty good, but there is a lip. So I'm replacing them. The rockers themselves, they seem in fairly good nick, and um, yeah, the rest of it's all good. The little pads on the bottom here are great, so they're going to be reused. But new shafts. So yeah, I'm going to do a little time lapse. I always forget when I start these jobs, but now I'm here, I remembered. I'm going to do a little time lapse. There we go, so all I'm doing really is scrubbing those uh, rockers, getting some of the gunk off them, and uh, oiling the shaft, making sure there's oil throughout the rocker, there's a little drilling in there, and uh, assembling them back on the shaft. I think I wasn't satisfied with these last two, so I took them off and re-oiled them. There we go, <clears throat> old one, new one, new shaft and everything else just cleaned. So now I'm going to do the next one. And just like that, the second one is done. Okay, next up folks, I've avoided it for a while because it's a big faffy job. I'm going to clean the pistons. Side of the job, I've got six here, I've got uh, seven to do. This one in the process, here's some of the bearings you can see. That was fairly typical of, uh, of what I found. The worst one is somewhere else, but that was just copper all the way around. And it was uh, it was really just about to spin that bearing. It hadn't spun yet, but it was about to go. So uh, luckily we caught it when we did, really. And it's now um, it's reground ten thousand oversize or undersize. So uh, you know rescued. What a result! So here we go. I'm going to clean these up. Now there's a lot of um, you know carbon deposit on the outside here from the blow by gas. I'm not that interested in cleaning it all off to be honest. It'd be a massive pain in the ass. So I'm just going to clean off any debris that's settled on there, any dust from uh, working in the garage. Uh, and clean off the bulk of the oil so I can put fresh on. Take the piston rings off, clean up the lands, and um, yeah, and clean the piston crowns. So you can see I've started that one. So uh, I'm just giving them a little clean up basically and calling them done. So you can see here I'm sort of using a little screwdriver to very gently scrape the dirt out of the, crisp, the piston ring lands. But as you'll see later on, I wasn't very happy with how it went, so I'm going to do it all again. Um, and then, last thing to mention, you can see I'm working in quite a mess there, but. Um, Every, when every piston was complete, I sprayed it off with that uh, very nice brake cleaner stuff and uh, made sure it was spotlessly clean before moving on to the next. Well, that's the pistons all done. It took a while. I wasn't happy with the uh, the piston ring grooves. Not clean enough, so did them all again. <laughs> Scraped a load more material out, and I'm glad I did. So they're all ready to go now. Now they have new stretch bolts, but I think I'm going to reuse these in a couple of places just for doing plastic gauge testing. Uh, and then I'll put all the new stretch bolts in for the final assembly. That's all for this video, folks. Uh, join us again for the next video where I will get the engine block and the cylinder heads back from the machine shop. Uh, check them over, do some final preparations, and then do all the um, dry assembly and clearance checking of the bottom end, the engine block. So, very exciting stuff. We are building towards the uh, the final assembly uh, in, in a subsequent video after that. Thanks for joining us. I really hope you're enjoying these videos and uh, tune in again.